You know, usually on Pizza and Reese TV, we always talk about going for some get cash and all that, but I guess tonight we decided to have a little bit more fun with that and bring out the actual Dash for Cash series. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome here to Pizza and Reese TV now live here at Daytona International Speedway, and this is your presentation for the Dash for Cash truck series race here on the show at Daytona International Speedway. Hi, everyone. I am the Crusader, Christian Shriver. And right now, here, as we get things settled up here, getting ready for tonight's action, this one is definitely looking to be a battle and a half here for many of these drivers. But, again, it's going to be a long, hard-fought battle here around these parts of town. Definitely going to be a wild little scenario or a little two here or there for these guys to really get cut, heaped up with and kind of get interested here with the track. Definitely going to be an interesting little go-around, interesting little race around here these drivers as they start to get pedaled up and really set for tonight's action here so with that in mind let's go ahead and take a look at our drivers lineup here and have a little bit with some of these guys here as we're bringing drivers out on the track and back out on the field some top dogs here and some big names in this show case of here sphere we've seen before on this tv names of course like the scene of the 83 here and brandon mefford as he now joins me on the call here and uh brandon it's been a while since we've heard really from you and the crew here on the uh, IROC series. We've been seeing you run so hard in the IROC Challenge series. This definitely got to be a bit of a difference maker here for you and the crew today, isn't it? Uh, Brandon, you got a copy down there? So we're trying to get a hold of him real quick here, guys. I don't really know if we're going to get a call, get a call from him or get a word from him here. No, it doesn't look like we're going to get a hold of him, so looks like uh, whether well, Connor cropped that one off through a loss here, start of the gate. I guess we'll just take a listen now to the number one seed here, and uh, maybe that number 94, Troy Radford here. Troy, you got a copy? I do, bud. How are you doing today? Oh, we got a copy of somebody here. All right, I'm doing pretty good, sir. Uh, nevertheless, good to have you back on the show and see you in another Yet Dash for Cash series. What's it feel like down here to be down in Daytona and South Talladega this time around? You know, honestly, I, I I never really have much luck at either of them, so <laughs> it's kind of all the same to me. But uh, I, I kind of like Daytona better a little bit. Uh, you know, not as much ability for people to do the uh, extremely stupid four wide on the high side and wreck everybody. So uh, a little tighter. A little tighter, a little bit more hard on the nose on the corners here. Uh, with that in mind, you think some of these guys are still going to try to play some big moves here? Or you think it's going to be a little bit of a smoother ride compared to last week? Uh, you know, I, I unfortunately was not in the in the last one, but um, I I I honestly don't know. I know we have no fast repairs tonight, so that's set up. Um, so hopefully everybody takes it nice and chill. Um, however, I firmly expect that you know we're probably going to lose half the field at some point to a wreck. So I just hope not to be in it. Well, let's hope we're not in it either, and we'll see if maybe you can bring some of that bad luck and juju out of here and get it into the victory lane today. Good luck. Guys. Yep, thank you, bud. Troy Radford, ladies and gentlemen, the number 94 here. Had a little chit chat with us here. Another guy going to get himself out on the track and looking to put up some big numbers here. It's the 95, James Mayer. James, right now, as we watch you kind of fill it up in the back here, how does the draft feel right now with these packs and with this crew? Looks like you might be pulling down to talk with us here. Hey, I got you. Hey guys, all right. So, did you hear anything we said there about the pack, or did you want to chat again about that? Yeah, I missed it. Okay, so you were just in that big pack there, kind of running around with them for a little bit. How is the drafting feel, and how does the car feel all around so far? Yeah, it feels good. Um, you know, no complaints. Uh, they're they're hooking up pretty good, and you know, as long as you uh, stay pretty center, uh, they feel pretty good. 
They definitely feel look pretty good as well here. Well, nevertheless, so as you get ready for qualifying, what would you say is going to be the best line to hit up from top or the bottom end when you get around the track? Um, I think that's going to be tough. Uh, I think the, you know, I, I usually like the high side. Um, so I think if uh, we can get hooked up on the high side and uh, keep it clean, I think the high side would be the way to go. For sure there. Best of luck down there, James. Thank you. Yep. Uh, which race room am I bringing you back into, by the way? Uh, I think it was four. It's four? Okay. Yep. I actually, <laughs> well, you know, I actually have something that shows me where everyone went last time. All right. Thanks for your time, James. Thanks. I usually don't have something that tells me where everything's at there, so. All right. Well, it looks like Brand Medford was trying to chat with us there, so it looks like he just he just let us know, like, in the uh, chat there. He wants to see if he can figure out what's going on. Let's eh, see if we can pick him up now. Nope, it's not picking us up there, so let's try this here. Brandon, you got a copy? Yes, sir. Okay, there we go. I got that to work this time. Hey, man, we tried to talk with you earlier on. It uh, looked like, like you said the mic wasn't quite shooting the way it should. Um, so, nevertheless, as we get you in this little room here, how does it feel right now on the track with uh, some new guys and some tough center drivers? Uh, you know, honestly, from what I saw, it looks like we got a pretty good group here. Um, kind of checked out a few of the guys push, you know, pushing them and also getting pushed and you know, it looked like it, it looked like a pretty solid group from what I was seeing. With how difficult it is to run a plate track and involving a little bit of that luck and as well as some driver skill on the pushing side of things, I mean, with the flat rear end of the bumpers here on these trucks, does that help the truck kind of stay a little bit more squared away to make harder runs off, or do you think it's going to be a bit more of a challenge with that? A uh, combination of things. So if it's just like uh, me and one other car, like uh, me pushing Brandon, you can push pretty well here. However because they are fairly stable and they draft real well like you can suck up from eight nine hundred you know eight nine tenths back um because of that if you get somebody pushing the pusher you're gonna end up in a bad situation but you know you can definitely push pretty hard it's not like the uh, arca cars where you kind of look at the car and they go sideways yeah that's definitely a true they turn into a bit of a dragsters without any rear rends to whip up on but nevertheless brandon best of luck here as we get ready for tonight's qualifying action that's like brandon effort ladies and gentlemen the MF for himself here, representing for him and his crew here, looking to try to bring out the best and the brightest of the top dogs here. We are under qualifying right now, race fans here, so as we continue on with our showcase of the IROC Cash for Cash Challenge, these boys right now are putting up some numbers and putting up some speeds. One of them just happens to be a guy you know all too well with these kind of runs. The Track Bar Media, number 15, Vincent Short. So far, got a second fast time here with about two hundredths of a second slower. Then the man coming down across the field, Stony Benfield, as he is the man to beat, the man of the hour, the man with the power. And we're about to listen in right now with him as we take a little chat down here, uh, Stony. Right now, currently, the way things are looking, you are the number one seed here and looking pretty solid to be CAD. Oh, hold on a minute, folks. Looks like he's having some interview troubles here. Stony, got a copy? You might have to unmute your mic there, sir. I don't know why it keeps muting, folks. Yeah, I'm not really sure what is going on on our end here, folks, or why people are getting muted, but they seem to be muted and just kind of messes everything up. Yep, looks like we can't get a hold of him here, so uh, looks like we'll just have to leave him be, I guess. So, not, not really sure what's going on down there with our uh, our interviews or our mics tonight. Let's see, it maybe Cook Quick's got a second here as he has uh, finished up his qualifying time, so... Let's see if we can get him in here. I, I don't know what's going on. Cook, can you get a hold of us here, bud? Well, we got him on the call list, but don't seem to have him unmuted here. Cook, can you unmute, bud? Or do you need to... Nah, I don't think we're going to get him here. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, guys. I, I'm trying to talk with these drivers. I'm talking to talk with some folks, but... It seems like when I bring them in, they just get muted. Now, and all of a sudden, now there's not much I can do from there. You said you couldn't hear me. I, I couldn't hear you, but you can hear me now. Yep, I can hear you. All right, Cook. So I don't know what. Out. Yeah, I don't know what's going on in our channels, but something's gone wrong on there. So it looks like we're just going to kind of join your channels here and talk with you. But Cook, right now, I'll just talk with you real quick here. How is the uh, track feeling, and how are you feeling right now with the tire wear here on this 550 horsepower package? Well, the tires are fine. It's just trying to keep it in line and not take anybody out. Not take anybody out. Kind of watch the line here. And uh, we heard earlier on a lot of guys are going to be trying to push and shove around here. What's your goal on that one here? 
Yeah, we definitely learned from last time conserving is not the way to go. That you gotta go as fast as you can and as hard as you can. Let's make sure he's not pushing me. That was Neil Quick, ladies and gentlemen, that was talking there at the number 10. So, Neil, uh, I'm presuming you don't want to be pushed either, huh? No, I'm, I'm all for pushing, but uh, as long as the uh, cook can stay off of my back bumper, I'm good. <laughs> Napier, any final thoughts before you head on to the track as well? Uh, I don't know. I just got in here a little bit late, but um, uh, probably just going to ride till the end and see what happens, you know? For sure there. Well, boys, um, looks like you guys got everything kind of figured out and ready to go for tonight's action. So best of luck down there, and uh, let's see what happens. Absolutely. All right, race fans, drivers are getting ready to go here. We're ready and set as well on our end. So let's go ahead and take it down now. Race fans, here is your starting lineup tonight here at Daytona Beach, Florida. On the pole, Stony Benfield will be the number one seed. Is outside Ian Martin in the 98. Row number two is going to be Matthew Baker in the number nine. It is outside the 15, Vincent Short. Row, six, row three is going to be Matthew Baker. Or excuse me, that will be Jason D. Maines in the five. It is outside the 18. That's Chris Wally. And row number four, Brian Reich is the number two. It is outside. That's the 25, Jesse Keene. Row five is going to be Paul Buzel in the 16. is outside. That's the 23, Cook Quick. Row number six, Neil Quick. Pilots 10 is outside. That's Carson Conway in the number 72. At row 7, we see Jeff Napier in the number 40 is outside. It's the 4, Rick Sibrens. Row, Rick, Rick Sibrens, excuse me. As uh, good. Row number 8 is going to be Troy Radford in the 94 is outside. The 95, James Mayer. And row 9, it's Mark Mann. At 04 is outside. The 83, Brandon Mefford. The final starter in this one, Ray Radford in the number 12. And race fans, if you wanted to see some fun, you wanted to see some heavy action here, you're about to get a piece of it and then some. It's time for your drivers of the, of the IROC Challenge Series Dash for Cash. Come to the line and bring out the top dogs, the best and the brightest here at Daytona. It's time to race for the cold hot cash. Race fans will bring him down off of turn number four to the front straightaway and initiate the lights around the track and on the green. The green flag is out. We're underway here on PT Race TV. Field locked in motion. We're off the start. 50 laps for the dash for cash. Only one will come out on top. Only one will be able to come away with the cold hard money tonight. The money they're aiming for, well, you must know, it is a solid top 10 payouts with a six, with a 35 entry. We've got about 20 drivers here, so that will be about a $15 entry. Tour and sunny dark the top five get paid 100 to 60 to 50 to 35 to 25 dollars. Big payoff for these guys and a big sum of chunk of money these guys are aiming for and they're working for today. And 
And all really boils down to one thing here. Just don't get caught up in the accidents. Don't get caught up in the messes. Stay focused on yourself and stay focused on your run. The rest, as they say, is history. Not more camera here with Paul Buzel in the number 16 Toyota Tundra right out of the gate here. Getting up there on the quick eSports number two, the WIRI number 10, or excuse me, number two, excuse me of Neil Quick as he currently is marching to the beat of his own drum, marching to the beat of his own run. Chris Wally up in the 18. Early lead for him as the rest of the guys kind of back off for a little bit here. Looks like some folks trying to stay easy through the corners and easy through the run. They don't want to get too crazy out of the gate. Something you'll notice a lot of today is a lot of drivers being very careful and very optimistic out of the gate because they are going to have to try and avoid trouble early and they don't want to push the shove too quickly but they know they don't give too much enough right out of the way they may have problems later on and that's something they really got to try to avoid here and this being only 50 laps too this is not a long run race this is really in my opinion kind of a 10 lap left to go battle for supremacy on like a mile and a half on a short track so there's a lot of drivers that will be trying to push and shove quick, and there's a lot of guys that will just try to take it easy, as we mentioned earlier. But that fuel line, really, though, that definitely is going to make things a little bit more tricky as time advances on, time goes on from there. 75 cent fuel, 200 tires against the three point checkers. Absolutely no fast up errors, though. These boys are put on a full standing charge, putting on a full set limit. They know their risks, they know the reward, but that's what makes this racing so darn good is when they can get it going, they can really pile up some speed and make some movements out of this one. This is where it gets fun. Jesse King, the number 25 right now, drafting up with his fellow comrade there from the Iron Rock Challenge Series in the 18 and Chris Wally. The man out of Newton, Texas, no relation to Newton, Iowa, as I, as I am currently hometown from, if you will. It's just the Jesse King in the 25 right now working quickly with the Florida based man of Chris Wally. This is kind of a homecoming here for Wally. He lives and breathes here in Florida and this is his hometown track. And what a track to be really a hometown boy on. The biggest, the baddest, and the toughest of them all. It's a track that many drivers fear and many drivers have, have dared to race on for so much years and so many times. It's a beautiful facility and a beautiful layout with some very interesting little bumps in the curbs and the roads as it's been through in the past. But it's always had a place in the world of NASCAR. It's always had a place in the world of motorsports history. Because really if it wasn't for this track then there really would never have been a top series run. There would never have been a top top track on the record books and it really wouldn't have been the one that inspired to be the mad the mad place that is Talladega it, without Daytona there would never have been any of those tracks to begin with the Viet or the Viet on board camera right now here at James Mayer in the 95 here as he tries to move the chains up at Rick Sabrins there Sebrins in the number four right now, holding his line in the Yeti number four. Remember last time as well, Sebrins and his teammate there had used up every ounce of that truck and every ounce of that speed. James is well aware of that too, looking to try and perform it again. But again, out of the gate here, just kind of going around the track, kind of pushing laps down off. It is Chris Wally in the number 18 that is currently And this isn't anything special, or this isn't anything just kind of all over the place. It's really just while I do what he knows best, that's be patient, be smart. Don't worry about what the other guys are doing. Don't worry about what anyone else is up to. Stay focused on yourself. He knows he's going to get bumped around. He knows he's going to get pushed around a little bit. And these guys are going to be a little bit hammerous to get ahead of him. But his focus and his traction definitely making up the best of it and making up for the most of it. Cook Quick and the 9 Cartoon Network styled up machine here. Kind of a little 
spooky little tail here. I'm pretty sure he's got a zombie island style scheme on that one. Oh yeah, I knew it. Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. I had to, I had to take a guess on that one because I saw that zombie up there, and I know that show like the back of my hand here. It was a really good show, episode and a good movie, by the way. Be sure to check it out if you guys haven't already. Very good, fun to watch. The Indiana native here, Brandon Bedford, right now trying to get up some speed, trying to take down Stony Penfield. And yeah, number 75 right now as he currently is right behind him just drafting off looking for an opening or two. I'd say when you get about 15 laps left to go, you'll start to see a lot of drivers maybe get very impatient and a little bit more observant on what they want and what they're after. Right at the moment though, what they're doing is what we call a bit of a gas strategy. It's a, it's a fuel mileage strategy. They're watching, tempoing, and pacing themselves. Not trying to do too many crazy things for the moment. Really, may have less looking for some opportunities here. Looks like maybe the 94 here getting a little impatient. Troy Radford trying to find an opening, trying to find a chance to really strive and conquer here. Seemingly going over to that outside line, see if maybe that side draft will work. While also trying to see if maybe he can make some passes up ahead of him, but that did not look like it went very well with him and the number nine of Cook Quick. Cook Cook's, I think Cook Quick's mindset was, I'm not dealing with anything there. I'm going to make sure to stay ahead of the field and stay ahead of my own little shot here. Mounting a runoff down on the edge here, down across the track here. We go on board here with Ian Martin and that 98 Ian Martin racing machine. Now Ian, we've known him before as kind of a plate track specialist. He loves to run this 98 Toyota Tundra in many regards, in many areas, really at the top of the peak and top of the level. Knows what it takes to really beat out guys, especially when it comes to that dash for cash style mindset. And he's seemingly trying to inoculate to get speed, get some runoff here on all these guys, making sure the guys stay focused and clear it up to take position in a full run of this race. Still not a lot of movement back in the packs here. Not a lot of movement up front. It's been kind of the same thing here or there. Really, we are pretty surprised. So the five, six spots up from Brian Reich now. Actually, Brian actually taking the race lead up. I guess I had to change my mind, change my tune a little bit. There is some movement back here. Brian Reich and the zero is now making a full lead charge ahead. The 18 of Chris Wally put back in the pack just a little bit. Drivers heading into pit road. Ian Martin, Matthew Baker, Jason D. Baines are into pit road now. Fuel mileage is now going to come into effect. Tires, not so much. Don't worry about that. Just put the fuel in and get going. Tires aren't going to do you much good around this place. When you're driving a 550 horsepower package and you're really not turning in hard on these bankings with a track that's been pretty much repaved. What was it back in 2018? Yeah, I don't think you got really anything to worry about on that end of say. Back on board here with Cook Quick as Paul Buzel tries to push and shove that 25 of Jesse King just a little bit more to get some runoff, get some speed under the hood. Ryan Reich in the zero looking to stay on out, but Buzel will goozle the number 25, Jesse King. Takes full advantage of it. Yeah, 
I think it's time we hear the roar of the motors and cut the voices off. Let the trucks do the power. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, Paul Buzel was straight sideways coming off in turn number one and two, but how on earth are they still green? What? They're still green. Buzel got goozled, but he stays under the run and stays in the throttle. How the heck did he even do that? Unreal. Look at this, race fans. Watch this. Entering into turn number one. Watch that 16 get clipped up by the zero of the Mr. Reich there. Fusel and Reich connecting with one another while while it went three wide saluting. Reich barely clutches the 16. And look at that. He is nearly sideways going in that turn. He's pretty much drifting like, a, like he was driving on Bristol Dirt right now. And he hanged on. Kept it under his wraps. Kept it straight. The drivers did the presence of mind. They backed off, let him get squared away. Perfect strategy by the drivers and great maneuverability by the 16 and the 0 to stay out of trouble. But the problem is they gave so much time up to the 25 of Jesse King and the 18 of Chris Wally. Now it comes to be a strategy of pushing and shoving to get the first advantage on one another. Wow, that is some wild stuff, Fair Race fans. And this is the kind of stuff you see a lot of here on Pizza Mason TV. You just never get tired of it. You can never get too old of it because, really, it never stops and it never ends. And, by the way, tomorrow night, I've got something extremely special for you guys. If you were on our Twitter handle earlier, you may have noticed something I, that we put in there. And I told the I told the editor to make sure they added that little extra moon shiners run you ever thought what would it be like if we had the moon shiner run back in the day put into modern racing and i'm not talking like straight line or oval racing or anything like that oh, no, no 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 i'm talking legit moon shiners running on the streets running into the dirt and having to go over a few hills and a few jumps well my friends let me introduce you next tomorrow night to our first time ever broadcasted show, 34 Legend Goops in Rallycross. The Moonshiners Rallycross is coming tomorrow night at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, here on Pizza Race TV. And believe me when I say it, you don't want to miss it. That's why you never miss anything on our Twitter handles when we post up, because we always have a secret coming our way. That is the announcement for you tonight. And of course, Green Mountain Grills will be live as well tomorrow night, so stay tuned for that as they will be back out on the show. But, Race fans, thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's National Cash IROC series. And if you haven't already, like and follow us up here on the show. Head over to our YouTube, subscribe there so you guys never miss any of the action or the coverage. And while you're at it, also, be sure to head over to our Twitter, like I mentioned, and give us a like there. And our Instagram has some love, too. We would certainly appreciate all the love, guys. I bet you have a lot of people out there are probably scratching their head thinking, how the heck are you guys going to run a race like that? The rally, for the rally cross and the Legends 34? I honestly don't even know. I've never seen it done, but I was told by these guys that are doing it, they've done it before, and it works. So, I'll let them be the judge. Right now, though, Matthew Baker and the number nine and the five, or excuse me, the five and the other five and Jason D. Maines and Ian Martin working together as a team trying to help each other out. Look for any kind of openings, kind of out of areas they can really run down with. As Roy Radford here and Brandon Medford teammates tonight looking to work together here. Going under the hood. Yeah, Roy Radford here and Kind of, it may look like they're just not really doing too much work here, but believe me, as I say this, when you're inside that cockpit and you're having to work that entire wheel around the car and your truck here and working around the entire track, it's not easy pulling that line down because, again, there's a lot that can go wrong. There's a lot that can really go completely out of order. Yeah, a lot of drivers know that. And again, it does not look like much, but again, some of these guys, like myself included, we don't set the force feedback up too low. We set it up pretty 
in a higher ranking here. When you feel start feeling those G-forces, that wheel pushing you forward, your wrists definitely get a bit of a workout as much as your arms do. And when you're hitting top speeds about 189 to 195 miles per hour, uh, yeah, then you guys are in for a little bit of a treat, a little bit of a rundown there. As we are on board there for Jeff Napier and the 40, we also had a little love, love for there, the number 95, James Mayer. Mark Mann yet again trying to work his way in around the track here, and I think it might be finally time to go ahead and kick things up a notch. Let the roar of the trucks and the motors come to life here. It's time to crank it up on PT Racing TV. You may be listening in right now on Rick Sebrin's number four right now. He actually, what he is doing is actually brilliant strategy here. You actually hear him clutching the truck inward. As he's clutching that truck, though, you may have noticed something. He's actually cutting off the entire engine system, the engine block. What he's trying to do is, is he's trying to preserve all that fuel, all that run, so he can go a further distance than everyone else, get an extra lap or two from that truck. And really, the reason why he would want to do that is because... When you start to clutch the truck in, you give your, and you clutch the engine in, that means you're giving yourself plenty of opening and plenty of leeway to get more fuel under the hood and down the road. That can play a huge factor, especially if you guys, guys like Justin Peters, Wally, so far up ahead, they're going to be using all that will let them gather it up on their run just to try to use it against every single driver out there. Every lap counts, and they can get to the halfway point. I guarantee you that will make things a lot easier for them to really start making a full charge and a full length here. But with a 75% fuel, it's not going to help them out very much. And Jesse King and Chris Wall, I know this too well. Paul Buzel, well, he just goozled the pit road in there. He was about ready to get sent for a ride. He looks like he had no choice but going to pit road. Guckweck and the rest of the field are going to stay on out and last out as long as they can. Now for Wally and King. My guess is when they get back out of the track, they're going to have to try to work together a little bit with that draft to push. And then they're going to have to start punching in a little bit as they start getting further into the run. Hopefully save just enough fuel to get to the very end. Last time, Sebrins and the 95 there of James Mayer were able to last out the full length run, full length of the race. Without really any consequences or any issues here, and that seems to be their strategy again. On the last time out, they definitely had a few times where that caution could have flew on them up and could have gave them some headaches, but that did not happen. Remember, two trucks had to be involved for the caution to fly its way and try to f and give these guys something to think about. It did not happen that day, and so far it's been basically just kind of time and strategy for the rest of the field. On board back here with Stoney Benfield here, and Stoney earlier on was the number one seed going off from the runs here, going off from the track, giving himself plenty of openings, plenty of opportunities to really strive and conquer here, and that's exactly what he's been up to since then. However, right now, I would say really kind of being stuck in that top five pack here. I mean, he'll come up with some money, but I guarantee you he's looking at the full picture. He wants more than just a little bit of money. He wants the full dough. 
And again, the payoffs tonight, $270 in total winnings for these 15 entries. That's 19 in total, drivers, but $100 to first, second to get second. Third, we'll get a cool $50, $35 to fourth, and then fifth, we'll get $25 in total. Has a good chunk of the field heads into pit road. Matthew Baker, Jason D. Mains, Ian Martin, they went into pit road earlier than everybody else because they know they have to pit at least twice in their mind. So what they thought was as long as they can outsmart the field, they can go win at certain points, certain times. And if a caution flies out, then they have already enough fuel to kind of get through the rest of the race and just sneak their way up front. That's the thing about Daytona Talladega we've always talked about here is how many drivers play the strategies of the fuel run and how many play for the luck of the draw or end up trying to force in the hand, at, the will of hand for some guys. That's been the very tough, to master tough to tame, figure out situation. And Mark Mann, Rick Sebrins, James Mayer, Tony Benfield, Garson Conway have all entered into pit road. Matthew Baker, Jason D. Mains, Ian Martin now taking over the race lead. And right now, I will tell you, the best strategy here is looking like definitely the guys that just went into pit road a minute ago. That being, of course, those that field of drivers there. But at what, what, at what cost will it come later in the run as the big field of guys now coming back up ahead? They know, you know they're going to be taking very close notes and, cliff, and cliffhangers on this one. If I was the drivers right now, my thing it would be is just watch my timing, watch the strategy. Because it seems like more than anything, they're putting themselves into a bit of a bind here, not getting too close to one another, not really clutching in where they should, like you saw earlier with some others. I think they're going to really have to start really looking at a full picture of the full run here, especially considering how late in the race this could get. Looks like these guys behind are not wanting to play fiddle to or second hand anybody. They want to get up ahead of a whole field here. Chris Wally leads the charge, but they're going to be cut off just a little bit, a little too slow, entering off from the trip from the Daytona draft race. Well, I certainly won't quit though. They're not going to give out that easily. I really thought that they were going to give in that easily. No. <laughs> You might not have watched anything on Pizza Race TV before because these guys we're watching right now, they have never given in or given out so much like that. They love to bring the speed and bring the power under the hood and make everyone work for that little extra. Field starting to stretch out just a little bit more as we go. About a 20 second gap for Baker, Mays, and Martin right now. But remember, if you went off their pit road strategy and their pit stop length, here's a look at their pit stops here. And you can see this is just a whole other ball game for these guys. They're going to have to get a little bit more clever than this because now they realize those guys that went in at the halfway point have an extreme big advantage. But at the same time, now that they're fighting off with the other guys behind them, maybe that might be enough to just kind of straight shoot it, straight shot off, and hopefully get enough speed and get enough run here to keep ahead of the field and keep ahead of that charge. This ball Buzel has to be put a lap down, unfortunately, in the number 16. Sebrin's mayor and man right now, they're currently uh, right up ahead. No relation to uh, the man being so it's probably easy with Mark Mann, at least that I'm aware of. There could be a relation. I don't even know anymore. Guys getting very persistent, a little bit persuasive right now. They're being very calm, cool, and collective. They're trying not to get put too far back, but at the same time, they really don't have a lot they can do. Normally, they really have a lot they can aim for. And that's obviously the biggest problem right now these drivers are facing. Also, just a heads up, folks, we will have top five interviews later on. We will hear from the boys, and we will hear from the drivers from them. So we will, instead of going three, we'll do top five because, honestly, I have a hard time kind of getting multiple drivers in. 
at the same go and the same pace here, so. Instead of just doing uh, three, we'll do five tonight for the fans and the drivers. Well, 20 laps remain right now, or excuse me, 19 laps remain at the moment. And again, Baker, Mays, and Martin, they are your race leaders, but that's really due to the fact they pitted in way before everybody else. And the pit strategy and the fuel strategy is telling them otherwise right now. If it was only a 70% fuel race, I'd say right now their strategy is absolutely brilliant. But the problem is it's not 70 to 75 and it seems like they can last out long enough. Although that 0-4, it's kind of worrisome for Mark Mann because really the, the, the 0 4 right now, he's getting pushed and shoved around a lot by the secrets here. I think Sebron's strategy right at this moment is just keep pushing him around and hopefully they can all work out to the end and who fired up. Sounds like also the NASCAR Cup race has finally gotten back underway here down on the dirt side of things and again I've I made my point clear I made my thoughts clear on that before but I absolutely love having some dirt racing on our track. I still am not sure about Bristol. I mean, I'll watch it either way because it's a dirt race, but. But, I mean, I still think really they should have gone to an actual dirt, dirt race, so. Nicholas Smith comes on board, rooting on this, this boy here. He's saying, go, King, go. He's rooting on that 25, Justin King, right now. We'll take it on board here with him. King's been very focused all day long here in that 25, and you can see the eyes and the focus and the determination he's got right now under that hood and under that helmet. Those eyes tell a better story than I could ever call on a broadcast because he knows what he's seen before, and he knows what he has to deal with, and he's just keeping a very close encounter with every single one of these drivers, keeping a close eye on what they're up to and what he'll do next. He is currently the man that holds up the third pack here. The third pack be represented by King, Quick, Cook Quick, Troy Radford, Brandon Mefford, Neil Quick, Chris Wally, Vincent Short, Stoney Benfield. They are the ones in that hunt in that pack. The second pack represented by Mark Mann, Rex Sebrins, and James Mayer. And then that first pack is the one leading this entire thing in Baker, Maines, and Martin. Oh, looks like the little runoff, though, coming up from the top side here. Looks like Cook Quick is getting very impatient up there with that 25. He's going to try to use Troy Radford as a little bit of a help, a little bit of a scapegoat. Jesse King stays to the bottom. And I think King right now looks like he just wants to go to the back and he wants to try to maybe last out his fuel run. It's getting very, very difficult right now to stay focused and really stay on a center shot. It's just getting very, very tricky. And these drivers know it. And look at this, Baker, Mains, and Martin, they have entered into pit road. Now comes strategy for the fuel. They've got to hurry up and get as much fuel as they can in there before Mark Mann, Sebrins, and Mayer get ahead of them too far. You know they're going to get ahead of them, though there's nothing they can do. They're just now finally getting in their pit stalls, and the five making a big mistake down there. Matthew Baker did not get into a stall in time or correctly. That's going to slow their pace down just a little bit as now come the leaders. Mark Mann, Sebrins, and Mayer will take the race lead. And remember, these are the three that went 50% of the race length. One more 50%, and one of them is going to take it to victory lane as long as that caution stays away. Nikki Short saying, Woo, go Team Short. Ruining on her boy down there in the old number 15, Vincent Short. Nikki, good to hear from you once more. Let's go on board here with Vincent. And just like I mentioned earlier before here with Jesse King, just the overall demeanor, the overall consistency and control a driver has at their will and at their feel, it is certainly something. It, and Vincent is no different. Remember, he's a, I've always considered him more as a plate track specialist for how he likes to race them and how hard he can race them. 
And right now his strategy, it lo looked like any other night, may be good enough to put him in top five, top ten contention, and maybe even put up for a race win. But unfortunately, like I said before, with some other guys out here, there are some other drivers that have completely nullified and just frankly disrespected the fuel run and the management of these car of these trucks. Our best lap time showing you as well on the screen here. Who has the best times? Who is the best overall? Well, right now the fastest of them all was, <laughs> well, no pun intended, but the guy that was quick in his name, and Neil Quick, he set up a 47.70. That's the fastest time today that he had earlier, and a lot of that had to do with just push and shove to the run that he brought to the table. Really having no troubles there. Really no clutch, no, no last minute choice with anything with it. Cook Quick right now is currently on the back bumper of that 95. James Mayer, he's trying, and I mean trying, to get himself a chance to set up the big run and set up the big field position here. Looking for some momentum, looking for some chances here to strike it a hard while he can. It's just so darn difficult, though. To strike when you can, when you want to, because you got to deal with the added pressure of drivers making it very difficult and tricky to get around. Field still stretching out a little bit. You can see guys Karen trying to find a little bit of an open area, a little bit of a shot or two to get around this track here. This two and a half mile long track has been always known for its tough little areas to hit up with. And this one has certainly been no different today. Matthew Baker having some troubles down there. Looks like he might have uh, a little bit of a spin out here. Something gone wrong. Let's take a look at the PTMS replay. I think he might have lost it in the turn. Oh, he lost it more than just in the turn. Take a look at this. Okay, right around off turn number four. You may have a little bit of an audio glitch there. I apologize in advance. I don't know where that's coming from. But you can see here's the five pushing him as hard as he can. And he goes straight shooting him. A little push and a little run they had to try to get that race back in their play. Thrown out the window. As unfortunately a teammate in this one gave him the bumper. And that was just a few mains here. That kind of put him into the back of the pack and into a bit of a rat run. Final 10 laps remain now down to nine. Who is it going to be? Did the drivers up front pace long enough? Did they strategize long enough? Mark Mann thinks he might have enough, but he's a little bit short on fuel, I guarantee it, for how hard he's having to been pushed around. Seabrins and Mayer, if they were able to clutch in at certain points and really last out long enough, they will be the ones to take this one home again. Cook, Quick, Troy Radford, Brandon Mefford, Neil Quick, Jesse Keene, Chris Wally, and all of them. There had to have been a little bit of a strategy moment here, a little bit of a time where they said to themselves, guys, if we don't do what these top five guys are doing right now, or top three, I should say, we're in trouble. There's a reason they beat us out last time. We need to make amends to that. I think they have figured it out. But as the question is, did they figure it out in time to do it? Lap traffic is now going to start to become an effector factor. It's going to become a bit of an effector. 
Everybody needs to start looking towards going to that double, triple wide stance here on the last bit of runs. This is the anticipation moment for these guys. With only eight laps to go, anticipation starting to become a huge benefactor. It is starting to really make guys question themselves. Last minute golden opportunity is coming up right now. That 0-4 mark man is just hoping and praying, I bet you, right out of that hood just to get this thing up to the stay up to the front, stay in the race lead. He sees how many laps are left, but again, this long track, this long form base form base race. It's jar it's gut wrenching as much as jar wrenching, to say the least. When you have literally everything at stake and everything on the line, all it takes is one wrong move, one wrong turn, or one wrong push, and it's game over. Believe me, there's a reason why I've only been able to win twice on this track. I've actually, excuse me, I've only won once here at Daytona. I've won twice at Talladega, but only three wins out of an entire play track series. I've been running literally for three years now. Not just from iRacing, but NASCAR Heat. I only got so many wins here in an actual league race or an official race. That is how difficult it is to win on these tracks and how difficult it is just to even get one little break or one little shot to get that opportunity to win it all. Jesse D. Baines and all the other guys behind right now, too far back ahead, they're too far out of the run. Jesse King, Chris Wally and all them, they tried desperately to get the fuel run to work in their favor, it didn't go. So now top seven, Neil Quick, Brandon Mefford, Troy Radford, Cook Quick, James Mayer, Rex Evans, and Mark Mann are the last remaining drivers standing out of this bunch. Five laps to go. I'll let you guys decipher in the comments section below and Facebook and our YouTube replay. And you guys may not know who's going to win, but who do you guys think? Who is it going to be? Who's going to be the top dog coming away with the win? Troy Radford says, you better make sure it's me here, Slater, because I'm going to the outside. I'm going for it. He's going to have help. Brandon Mefford trying to work it up. The MF are trying to help him out here and give him some speed. Oh, and Mark Mann getting a little tag there. Coming off of down turn number four. Got sent around. Radford takes full advantage. Now it's time for the 94 to take the race lead. We're only four laps to go. Oh, and Mark Mann right now, I guarantee I know how he feels, and that is not what he wanted to see happen. But Seabrins and Mayer were having to push and shove to help their fuel run out, but also trying to stay clear of trouble that was brewing ahead of them. Mefford and Radford making a beautiful pass around the cars and around the track. But now it's time for the number two, Neil Quick, to make his presence felt. He's got help from the number nine of Cook Quick as they push him further and up ahead. And remember, Quick, Cook, the Cook boys said earlier, you better not be pushing me, you better not be shoving me around. Well, the good news is Cook's not shoving him, and Neil is pushing everything he's got on the front end with that hood with three laps to go. Which one of these drivers is it going to be? So much on the line, so much at stake here. There is a good $100 on the line for the race winner. You have any idea what you can do with $100? That's like five or six trash you can buy on this service for crying out loud. That's like four, That's like five cars you can get with this, for that kind of money. That is a lot for these drivers to face up with. And the funny thing is, they're looking to get this to be really kind of a weekly end, a little bit of a fun race scenario and show. I wouldn't blame them, and I certainly would love to see as much as I can of it. But that's, but we can only go so far, we can only go so many times with the way our schedule works these days. But this is where things get fun with the white flag coming up next time by. We are down to just two laps remaining. Not a single caution. Can they keep it under the wraps? Neil Quick has the race lead, but for how long? Seabrins and Mayer are looking to push ahead. And they've got lap traffic ahead of them too. 
This is going to be an interesting little tail whip here as they come right off a of turn two. On the outskirts, it looks like that might have been... Uh, looks like that was the number 12. That was Ray Radford getting out of the way. Stays out of trouble. They're going to stay clear. Going down three and now entering into four. One more time by. We'll see green. We switch it to white. Can they get it to the line? If they get it to that white flag, they're going to get this one finished. It's the white flag is out. They're going to finish it. This will be finished under the checkered flag. But who will it be to the top spot? Neil Quick getting pushed and shoved around like a madman down there. Needs help from his brother, Cook. Cook is going back to the bottom. He tries to block Sebrins. He blocks him off. Coming off to the end. They're still punching. They're still shoving. This last bit, this last fight off the ends. Neil trying to hold on. But Sebrins with the last runoff for the big push from the 95. Mayor has a big shove coming up. He's got him shoved down the bottom. Neil's pushed back behind. They are dead even coming off the line. Mayor and Sebrins are going to do it again. Coming to the back. But look at Mark Mann from the back of the back to the end of the outhouse. Straight to the checkers. It's going to be Sebrins pulling off the win here on P3 TV at Daytona International Speedway. Somebody's going to be a hundred dollars richer now. Your race winner in the number four Yeti machine. The Yeti Coolers puts up another showcase and puts up another round of battles and fight off zone. Rick Sebrins is going to take home the checkers and an absolutely chaotic display and hard racing performance by the number four and his, and his teammate and man behind him and, May and James Mayer. Look, I'll say this, kudos and credit to Mark Mann. The dude got sent around in turn two, and yet this brother just came right back to the pack and said, I'm not done until this race ends. Credit to him, but it's not enough to knock down our Dash for Cash winner. And the number four, Rick Sebrins, pops off another tremendous performance here on Pete Race TV. And the final results are now in Sebrins with the win. Mayor will go second by a mere two hundredth of a second. Neil Quick, give the kid his due. He gave it everything she had, but that last block cost him. He'll start coming away with some money. Mark Man comes away with a few bucks and Cook Quick. Well, he'll join his family member Neil with get, taking home some money. Brandon Metford, Troy Radford, Jason D. Maines, Ian Martin, and Jeff Napier, unfortunately, will go home empty-handed as well as Stoney Benfield. Vincent Short, Conway, Wally, King, Baker, Reich, and Buzel, and Ray Radford, unfortunately. But that is not to say they did not put up a performance and not put up a fight from start to finish. What a race. Race fans here on P-Trace TV. So now, with that said, with that in mind, we present to you our top five finishers. And the time has come to listen in to our top five drivers from this entire field today. It's time to listen in to the top dogs of them all. And we start with the man that piloted and helped out for the most of the race here in that num in that machine here today, Cook Quick. Now joins me here on P3's TV here in the number 20 in that number uh, nine machine, I believe, here in uh, Cook. Well, looks like we're still having some troubles down here, bud. Hold on. I don't know what's going on with this interview booth here today, but it's not working today. All right, Cook, you got a copy, buddy? I got you. Okay, now we got it working. So, fifth place today, my friend, and boy, that was a wild last couple laps for you and your family member, Neil, there, man. I don't know what the heck was going through your guys' minds when you saw the pack come up and fight, but you put up a good bite and good up for a good run, but this one just was a little short, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm happy, obviously, running up there with those guys, a good bunch of guys. Um, I just like nice seeing, like, the IROC guys up there with my brother Neil and then uh, Troy and uh, Medford. Um, I was definitely going to try to stay with them since we race with them every week, but we came up a little bit short. Came up a little short, but still put up a heck of a performance and a heck of a last-minute run here. Well, I'll ask you this real quick, though. If there's anything you guys could have done differently, would you maybe been trying to uh, 
do anything a little crazier at the very end, or would you say this is exactly what you needed to do? Well, see, we didn't know what the pitch strategy was with the first three guys, so if we would have known they were going to make it, we would have probably pushed a little harder sooner instead of waiting a little bit. We were hoping that they were all going to pit, and then it would be down to us three or four, but um, that's the only thing I'd change. Sure, Just yeah, try and move a little quicker. Well, nevertheless, a little quicker on the nose, a little quicker on the shot, but you certainly did put up the fight to the very end of it all. So, with that in mind, a top five finisher, who do you want to thank for this one? Uh, I'd like to thank, uh, obviously, Wally for putting this on, um, all the sponsors, obviously the uh, Neil and Jeff in my chat that we strategized with. Um, I thank them. It was, it was fun. It was fun. It was great to see you here. Well, nevertheless, Cook, thanks for your time here today, sir, and congratulations on a fifth-place finish. Thank you. Credit where credit is due to Cook. He gave it everything he had to pull up a fifth-place finish here today. But race fans, now we're going to go ahead and talk with our fourth-place finisher here today at Mark Mann in that 0-4 machine as he is about to chat with us here. He now joins me here on the show here. Mark Mann, what a race here and what a battle here to say the least. Oh, yeah, that was uh, awesome. It was awesome. Now, uh, let's talk about this one here. You had a little bit of a circumstance here coming up from the very end as we were down into turn number four there. You got tagged pretty hard there. Are you sure you, the truck was okay? Uh, the target was fine, you know, and that's just one that I need to be able to hold on to. Uh, you know, Rick pushed me out of the turn, but in reality, I need to be able to hold on to that. And it pushed me down, but... I did lift a little, but I stayed pretty throttled because I knew that there were only, a, you know, a handful of cars in the front pack and I wasn't going to kill anybody coming back up on track. So put me in the back a couple seconds, maybe 1.8 seconds, and I was able to, uh, in four laps, get back up there and push that high line. You able to push the high line, kind of push that runoff in the end. That was pretty impressive in its own right. And I think I said point blank in the show, I said, I got to give you credit for that because that's, that's not easy to do. And that's very difficult and tricky to really master. But with that being said, I mean, with this race kind of meaning a lot, and you're going to still come away with some money here. I mean, is it really worth it in all in for that top four? Oh, heck yeah, absolutely. Anytime you finish in the money, it's, it's great. Even if it is, you know, uh, your money back. Uh, makes it all worth it. I love I love super speedway racing, so just coming out here to race is a lot of fun, and it was a good group of guys, too, out here. For sure there. Well, we certainly hope to see you back here soon, Mark, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see a little bit more heavy action on the nose from you and the crew, but nevertheless here, congratulations on this finish here, sir. Who do you want to thank here? Well, I'd like to thank my teammates, uh, and I'd like to thank you guys at PTM Racing for broadcasting this and the league that puts this on. And all the fans and friends at home, and my friend Mara always watches this. And happy Easter, everybody! And thank God for rising today. And uh, yeah, so thank you, everybody. Happy Easter, indeed, Mark. Congratulations on this one. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, your fourth place finisher here today, Mark Mann, in that number zero four. As he comes away here in a solid debut race, I'll say he definitely came away fighting with everything he got. But right now, race fans, we have some more drivers to talk with here. So next up on the roster here is the third place finisher here today. Piloting it up, it is Neil Quick here as he now joins me. And uh, Neil, oh, so close. Usually I say you have that number two car in second. This time we go third. But really, that was all boiled down to just one thing. And that was the strategy the boys played on you at the last minute. And that hard to control master pass there that they threw right at you, sir. Yeah, that was a great move. Uh, I know there at the end, Rick put a, a move. He was able to get ahead and, and just move down enough to to get in front of me. But uh, that was some good racing that last four or five laps there. And, uh, good fun, hard racing, and uh, clean racing too. So that was something else there. But, uh, man, for a restrictor plate race, and uh, the car still got all four tires and wheels on it for me, That's that's a win. Definitely a win, definitely a bit of a wild rain, a little wild run here. But let me ask you this here, sir. I mean, you guys had literally, for the first bit of that, it seemed like everyone was staying cool, calm, collective. They didn't want to do nothing about doing anything crazy. And then you guys literally get into the last bit of that run, last bit of the run and that field. And then it's like, well, the gloves are off now. Like, we always kind of know it was going to happen. But it just didn't quite clip at the very end. It was really anything that having to do with just the way the – the truck was centering off on the on the drafts or was it just really because of the strategies everyone else played on you 
No, I think that, uh, in, in just kind of talking a little bit with the guys about this was that, uh, I was at the end of the group that I was in and, uh, a couple of the guys pulled out on the outside and I tried to go with them and it almost like it stalled out for a second before I could suck back up to them. And once I got to them, I could push them past the inside line. But, uh, it just, it did feel like there was a little bit of a stall there for it, but I mean, none of us put tires on in that pit stop and most of us, uh, the, these uh, there's a lot of strategy in these races and seeing if you can make it the, to the end. And once a once in that last uh, five six laps, when you look down and you've got enough fuel to make it, I think that's when the uh, the the fire gets kind of ignited and everybody starts making that charge up there to to get to the front and try to get the win. For sure, there try to get the win, try to get the last bit of that truck to get as far as you can ahead and. At the end of the day, that's kind of how it all plays out around here. Well, nevertheless, Neil, come away third today, my friend. Who do you want to thank you for that? Uh, i definitely like to thank uh, Chris Wally, Five Star Graphics. Uh, of course, IROC and Chris Wally for putting on these uh, Dash for Cash races. Uh, WR1 Sims, uh, Track Bar Media, uh, R&R Racewear, uh, family for allowing me to have time to do this, and you guys doing a great job of the broadcast. Uh, appreciate you guys doing that. Absolutely, man. We really appreciate you coming back on board here. Congratulations on a third place finish, and we'll catch you next time out. All right, buddy. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in the number two, comes up just a little short. Neil Quick, as he puts this one run around, put up for a big battle and a half. Now joining me, though, in that second place finish, and oh so close to this one, but puts up a heck of a run at the end. James Mayer in the number 95 here will come away second. James, congratulations on that, sir, and uh, – well, really, it all boiled down to just one thing, and that was the last push, that last runoff, coming down off of turn four, and it looked like that four of Seabrins just kind of got you once again here. Yeah, I mean, of course, we were working together a little bit. Um, yeah, of course, it was a little bit of fuel strategy tonight, uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, pushing, uh, and um, yeah, just a little bit short. Uh, you know, we were close, and, uh, you know, I thought Rick would stay, but he went low, and I was like, well, it's... It's a fair game then, you know, he, he left, so <laughs> we, we can go. Uh, but, you know, he got cleared, and uh, obviously we're working together. So, it, you know, if we can all get on the podium and race clean, you know, we're, we're all for it. For sure, there in Talladega, too. We saw you guys kind of going back and forth at it, kind of bowing hard. But then here at Daytona, it seems like everything kind of did much of the same here, which was just kind of pace, strategize, and then hit up as much as you can there. And really that last run really was what set everything up for you to the end. But nevertheless as you kind of come away here from this race i mean i gotta believe you are still wanting to get a little bit more redemption and a little bit more fast speeds on the push here today aren't you yeah well, i mean always uh you know it's uh you always want to finish first um you know we we, we had our, our guinea pig out front mark uh you know he's another one of our, our teammates um you know so he, he was burning the fuel for us and uh you know we were pushing on him and trying to save as we were doing that but uh, so when, uh, Rick, Rick got him loose there, uh, coming to the front stretch, uh, so that, that was a tough break for him, but he got back to us and, uh, ultimately he probably gave us the shove to get Rick Claire. Um, so it's, uh, two great teammates and, uh, you know, as much as I want to finish first, uh, you know, I'm just happy with second with a team like that. For sure there. Well, nevertheless though, as, uh, the teammates came through today and came through on the field for you in the charge, I have to ask you this, sir, what do you want to thank her today for this, uh, third or second place finish? Well, of course, uh, you know, Rick and Mark, uh, you know, with the team, uh, like I said the other week, they keep it fun. They keep it, uh, you know, they keep it, keep us competitive. Uh, of course, Chris putting these races on and uh, the guys coming out and running them. Uh, and, you know, my two races over here, very clean races. Uh, you know, you can't complain about a, a green green flag run like that. So, uh, you know, shout out to those guys. And, uh, of course, you guys up in the booth putting on the show. For sure there. All right, well, Mayor, it looks like the show you put on today was about as good as it was up here in the booth for our end. So congratulations on that second-place finish, sir, and we certainly hope to hear from you in due time. Yeah, I hope so too. James Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, here comes away here out of the bunch, out of the field. He'll come away with the top honor and top spot here as I believe we have one last guy to uh, have a little chat with, and that is, of course, Rick Sebrins. Although I... Bam, nah. Oh, there he is. Here he comes now, race fans. There he is. He just wanted to hop in real quick, have a word here. He's out of that truck. He's in victory lane today. Ladies and gentlemen, the number four, Rick Sebrins, with a victory here in the Die Rock Dash for cash. And, uh, Rick, 
hundred dollars richer and uh, I would say uh, feeling pretty darn good right now after that big move you made off turn three. Yeah, we'll take that, man. What a what an awesome job by the everybody on this Lions Sports Sports team, man. Uh, wow, high five, really blew it there, man. I gotta apologize to the all the uh, the O four team and all their guys. Uh, I I was just trying to time my run just right there when I seen that outside line getting that energy, and I just wanted to give Mark a little bit of push down that front stretch so we could kind of hold that track position and uh i got him out of shape there and uh thankfully he recovered and and uh we got it back organized up on that high side they just got a heck of a run run on us and uh super fortunate to get a uh run back up on that outside tonight and uh bring this thing home to victory lane bring this home to victory lane put up a huge run off and a huge final edge to this exit here in this race run but i mean let's just kind of chat about this for a second because my friend, you had to literally hold on, really in my opinion, for everything you could on setting up the gas, setting up the setting up the big move, setting up the push, and you know that that truck really, in my opinion, had a lot more at stake and had a lot more on odds than I think most people are giving you credit for. You had to time everything on that fuel run, and it worked perfectly. Yeah, and another one too. Uh, uh, the ten car quick there. That push he gave me coming back to that line. Otherwise, without that, I, I, I we don't win, and I think the ninety five probably wins. So he gave me a tremendous push. Made sure he was good centered, and uh, wasn't off centered, and got us all out of shape, man. So a lot of the credit for this goes to him too. I j just can't be, uh, just can't say thanks enough to everybody that puts these races on. Uh, there's so much to be proud of over here in this league. That's two weeks in a row. Uh, we've had 50 laps each with uh, just some guys coming out, having fun on a Sunday night, and uh, putting on some green races for the fan. I hope they enjoyed it. I think they enjoyed it indeed. Rick, congratulations, sir. And what a day it has been. A trip to Victory Lane and $100 richer here at Daytona. Yeah, super pumped. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for putting this on. And I uh, can't wait for the next one. For sure there. Ladies and gentlemen, your race winner today in the Yeti Cooler is number four. It's Rick Sebrens. All right, race fans, that's all but going to do it here today for our showcase here on Pizza Race TV. But, ladies and gentlemen, we really appreciate you guys coming on board. Thanks for coming on down to check out the drivers, check out the stars in the cars, the trucks and Mars. This has been a fantastic race, and I've been a lot of fun to call. Big thank you again to those that tuned in. Like and follow us up on Facebook again if you haven't already, and head over to YouTube, subscribe there. You never miss a show tomorrow night. I've got two broadcasts coming. You know what one of them is, and you know what the other is. I don't say anything else about it. You enjoy yourselves. Have a good night. Stay tuned for tomorrow's action.